go. Back. Another episode of the Zero Powerlifting Podcast. I don't know why I did that, but enjoy. Um, so, Declan, my man, has uh, asked me to talk about... He specifically asked the how you would work in the transition from conventional to sumo deadlifts. Um, I'm going to extrapolate that out a little bit and talk about just transitioning from a style to another style. Because this happens in... Um, all three lifts in various ways, shapes, or forms, whether it's changing your stance width, your grip width, the bar position on your back, your setup, um, again, sumo conventional, all of that sort of thing. And there is a little bit of an art to making a transition and doing so in the best way. So we're going to go through so, th- through some of the things that it would be worthwhile considering as you make this transition um and yeah we'll, we'll get straight into it so the the let's let's start with deck <clears throat> well Declan's suggestion of how are you going to make the transition from uh, conventional to sumo uh, the first point of call here would be learning the skill of sumo to begin with and assessing if you have the movement requirements for you to be able to perform the skill of sumo straight up and if not you're going to have to work on getting there in the first place because sumo versus conventional is not a case of just here's where you're normally standing now stand a bit wider and do the same thing it's actually a bit of a different beast altogether and if you don't have the prerequisite movement requirements to get into the right position uh, you're going to build strength movement patterning in a way that's not going to be conducive necessarily to you expressing your strength in the best way possible at the top end so the first thing would be going through that assessment From a more practical perspective, the tool that I would use and the tool that I do use here at Zero with my lifters and the coaches through the Zero network, this is what we use to both assess and develop the skill of sumo is a reverse sumo. So sumo is unique to conventional in the sense that you can create an eccentric moment and emulate the starting position exactly as you want it to be versus conventional, that's quite hard to do. So what I mean by that is Uh, to assess someone's ability to perform a sumo to teach the skill of sumo really it comes down to understanding what the bottom position feels like because that's the hardest part of performing a sumo it's getting into the right bottom position setting yourself into that bottom position and the best way to do that is from the top down so what i would get a lifter to do is to find their stance find the angle of their feet and i'd guide them through this process if you're doing this yourself you just kind of have to experiment you'd start at the top you'd set the factors involved, which is gonna be the same as a squat. So you're gonna set your shoulders in position, you're gonna set your brace, you're gonna twist your quads out to create hip torque. You're gonna hold all of those things and travel slowly down into the bottom position of a sumo, maintaining tension in all those areas. Touch the floor super, super, super light, so keeping all that tension on. When you touch the floor, when everything's primed, that's what the bottom position of a sumo should feel like, assuming everything's in the right position. Then you would hold that tension and reverse back out of the top. So I would use that drill to assess, can someone even get into the bottom position in the first place? So if I'm cueing them, if I'm guiding them, they can't open up their hips, they can't maintain their brace, they can't keep their shoulders on, that suggests to us that there's more work to do before they can even perform the skill. So we need to do that work, get them in position first, and then we can work on transitioning them. So this is gonna be very similar when it comes to changing grip width on bench press. It's not a case of just you take your hands out wider and then voila, do the same thing. Most people arrive at a narrower grip because they can't perform a wide grip because the things that are part and parcel of the skill of that might be missing. So you need to learn the skill. Can you maintain the shoulder position? Can you achieve the shoulder position in the first place? Can you control that through the range that you're traveling through? If you can't, you need to get to that point first and then you can start to manifest that skill. Same thing with a closer stance to a wider stance on the squat as well. You have to learn the skill first before you can expect to apply it. Once you have that skill, making the transition, uh, the time that it takes to actually uh, make that transition fully is going to be completely dependent on the lifter. That is, Do they have the skill? How skillful are they? How strong are they? How well can they express their strength in that skill? All of that is going to be lifter dependent. So don't set any clear expectations on the time frame that it's going to take. You have to respect that it's going to take a while to uh, invest energy into developing that skill and expressing strength through that skill. Um, So everyone's going to progress at different rates in that sense. Um, There are some tricks and tips that will help you along the way. The first thing is to recognize 
that once you learn the skill, it's not then just a matter of expressing strength in that skill. That is, once you learn the skill of performing the sumo deadlift or the wide grip bench press, don't expect to be equally as strong as you are on the other style that you're transitioning from. Don't expect to see that for a while and expect that if you test it, you will be disappointed. So oftentimes there's a threshold, a technical threshold that once you cross with the new skill, the lift feels like total shit and that can be quite disheartening. So let's say you um, bench press 150 kilos with a narrow grip, you want to switch to wide grip. Maybe that threshold sits at 120. So everything with a wide grip feels great until you get to 120. Then once you cross that, it all goes to shit. You're going to be like, well, wide grip isn't for me. Maybe you just haven't given it the time to develop within that skill. You know, to, to push that threshold, to close that technical gap. Um, and again, what, what that threshold is to begin with, how long it takes to close that gap is completely lifted dependent. So the first tip is to recognize that you're not going to be as strong or you may not be as strong in the new style straight up and then it might take a long time for you to be able to express your strength in that skill. This is especially important to recognize when you know that your current technique is the thing that's holding you back. Because the new technique might feel like it's holding you back further, but if it provides one step back to go two, step forwards, two steps forward, you have to commit to that process. Tip number two is going to be working out in which phases of training you can implement these changes. You don't want to implement these major changes when the kind of weights that you're lifting require you to have a little bit less of a technical focus and more of a focus on getting the work done. That is, you don't want to apply big technical changes in something like a strength phase, but rather you'd want to apply these changes in phases where you're using percentages or intensities that allow you to think about your movement and change the way that you're moving under the load. So if you're going from a wide grip to a, a, a sorry, a narrow grip to a wide grip or a, a conventional to a sumo, you might build that into, say, a development block when you're working at 65, 70, 75%, doing high reps so you can build conditioning in those smaller muscles that control those positions, spending a lot of time doing reps, building skill, uh, and using a weight that's light enough for you to control the movement in the way that you want to control it, that's probably going to be a great option. If you don't have that option, but you still want to start to develop the skill, Think about incorporating things like tempo work. You know, even if this means you do your main work in the same style that you were using before, and afterwards you just do a bunch of tempo stuff where you practice the new style and slowly increase the weight on that to the point where you're comfortable to do your working sets with that new style, that's going to be a good way to slowly start to make that transition. Don't think that once you make the commitment to switching style or a new type of technique, that it has to happen straight away. You can ease yourself into this and you can do it gradually, you know, with a, a conventional tool sumo, you can start on blocks and work your way to the floor. With a sumo, you could start with tempo and then work your way to pulling from the floor. With a grip change on squats or a stance change, a grip change on bench or a stance change on squats, you don't have to go straight to the wider or the narrower stance, you can go in between that and slowly work your way towards it. Um, just remember that you're not limited here by time. You don't have to make these changes straight away. And that if anything, you need to commit the time to making the changes stick and making the changes work. The final tip that I'm going to leave you with is this is especially true with the people who um, go back and forth between different styles and can't figure out where they sort of sit best. Um, if you're just changing one of these individual variables, you're just taking your feet wider, your hands wider, narrow, whatever it is, and it seems to work and then it seems to not work, maybe it's not the position that your hands or your feet are in, but the way that you're engaging or the way that you're performing the lift. You see this a lot with squatters who have developed a lot of strength in high bar and then they switch to low bar. When they switch to low bar, there's now a new requirement through the control of the shoulders, the range that the shoulders travel through, the strength that they need to have to control those ranges and those positions. And if they don't change anything about the way that they think about the movement, the way that they cue and perform the movement, they should expect it to not work. If you take your hands out wider on a bench press and you don't change the way that you engage your shoulders, you should expect it to not work. If you stand wider on a deadlift, you switch to sumo and you don't change the way you think about your hips, you should expect it to not work. So there is going to be a slight change in the way that you need to perform these lifts if you've tried them before and tried to make these switches before and they haven't worked. Otherwise, you're going to end up with this mindset of like, I've tried wide grip benching before and it doesn't work for me. It's like, no, you took your hands wider and that didn't work. Benching is a different story. 
This is the same thing of said. This is the same as saying I've tried every diet and no diet works for me. It's like, have you really? Is there a solution? Can we provide an expert opinion that actually changes the lift to a different lift, irrespective of where, of where your hands are on the bar or where your feet are on the floor? Think about it like that. Hope that helps. Any questions? Any comments? Any topics you want us to talk about? Click us a message. Always happy to help.